Hey, would it be possible to use uh, Le- the Lagrange point to make a giant pile of space debris? Seems like that would be easier than bringing it all back to Earth and much more ethical than just flinging it out into space. Also, in the future, we could use it like an auto junkyard. Mm. And when we want components or metals or stuff like that, we could just go to that to build in space instead of recycling. Oh, wow. So, so more, but tell us first about Lagrange points. Yeah, so basically these are points in a three-body system where uh, you have some st- stable and some unstable points, places where uh, this gravitational influence in, in that system is, let's, let's say, kind of null. It, things cancel each other out. Um, but yeah, out of the five, out of the five points, uh, out of the five Lagrange points, uh, I believe two of them are are stable and the other three are unstable. And so, I would say this: we need to find ways of not creating orbital landfills. So, so, so the thing is, sending stuff to Lagrange point, uh, while you might be able, and oh, by the way, even when you send stuff there, it doesn't mean it just stays there forever. Like you know, eventually the thing's going to drift out just due to perturbations that are non-gravitational, uh, mostly in that sort of stuff. Plus, as as Neil, you, you clearly you know this, uh, there's more than just a few bodies in, in, in the universe. And so eventually, uh, you know, the curvature of space time will force these things out uh, if they're uncontrolled. So it's not a good answer and uh, uh, it's not a viable solution. And we should avoid uh, f- trying to find a place in space to just send garbage to. <laughs> Right. So, uh, uh, yeah, and, and so basically, let me just see if I got this right. He's asking whether or not we could create a celestial equivalent of our ocean's great garbage patch. <laughs> yeah. Which is where the currents come together and create a stillness. Yeah, yeah. And then and let's do that in space. We, and let's, let's do, that, do space. that in space. <laughs> I love well, it. so we don't want we don't want to do that, Chuck. Okay, so just let me throw some astrophysics in here. Okay, the one of the Lagrange, one of the attractive Lagrange points in the Jupiter orbit, the Jupiter Sun orbit. There's a leading Lagrange point and a trailing Lagrange point. If you look there, there are asteroids that have collected there, and they're called the Trojan asteroids. And so it's it's a fascinating. And we knew to look there because we said. Here's a place where all the gravitational forces cancel out. So there's got to be some, anything that sort of drifts in won't have a reason to drift out very quickly or at all. Right. So right. we actually find these places that have, are repositories. But I like the trash heap example. Uh, and I think a Sanford and Son space <laughs> in space. We should do that. <laughs> For sure, it, it, we, when, if we do do that, it should have the theme song that goes along with it. <laughs> it should have the theme Without song. doubt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we agree for yes. three, three on three. Yeah, and by the way, every time you drop something off in that great uh, junkyard in the sky, you should hear, shut up, dummy. And that's your <laughs> <beat. laughs> All right, give me, give me some more. All right, here we go. Chris Newbery. And Chris says, uh, Hey, Chuck, bet you don't get my last name correct on the first try. Oh, man. Uh, that, 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 uh, see, I should read these first. Uh, I'm going to say Newbry instead of Newbury. But anyway, because it's uh, N-E-W-B-R-Y. Uh, Dr. Tyson, just love you and uh, love uh, your Cosmic Queries book. Um, SpaceX, the idea that put 42,000 satellites into orbit for optimal internet around the world. That being said, does that put a lot of junk into orbit? How much does that increase the risk of future endeavors uh, of this rock having such a net surrounding it? Oh, so uh, let me reshape that slightly. So more of a, if we have functioning satellites, then they're not junk. But if you have thousands and thousands of functioning satellites, isn't there still a risk that they could collide with each other? Interesting. Yeah. And, and, so, and so I would say this, low Earth orbit is already building itself up to be this place with these functioning satellites, like you said, owned by different companies, but there isn't a, a space traffic coordination uh, entity, right? So, so the thing is, people are making decisions about how to maneuver and go you know how they want their satellites to behave 
but they're doing that in the absence of coordinating with other people that are also making decisions. And so that does increase the risk of things uh, you know, bumping into each other in the night, so to speak. And it's not, and space isn't just so supremely empty that we shouldn't worry about it? No, because we have very specific orbital highways where we put these satellites given the purpose that we want. And right now, for instance, uh, you know, with SpaceX and the Starlinks, which, oh, by the way, you know, out of the nearly 30,000 objects that we track, um, about 3,500 are working satellites and Elon owns about you know 1500 of those so wow. so it's already quite a bit but uh so wait, wait so wait chuck elon is going to become skynet oh my there god go. oh yes look at that and skynet's going to be achieve consciousness right and, and then control that's the, the robots. end of us all that's the end and of by all. the way neil He's your friend. <laughs> I do count him as a friend. That's true. But, but that, that, that just, you say that like, okay, I'm also to blame just because I know the guy. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. Well, so hold on a second. So I'm not saying that that Elon is, a, is at fault for anything. What I'm what I am saying is that he owns most of the working uh, satellites uh, in Earth orbit. He will continue to own most of them, um, a, as I see now, given the fact that he's got licenses to, to launch. And so pretty much if you want to go beyond 500 kilometer altitude, you've got to coordinate with Elon because because you got to go through his layer uh, mm. of, 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 of Starlink satellites. So the coordination piece is really important and that has not uh, become manifest yet. So that is an issue. So I got this. Elon is the next James Bond. So yeah. he's 008. Definitely. And they say, uh, uh, <laughs> license to launch. <laughs> license to right. license right? to launch. License yeah, 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 to yeah. launch. Exactly. That's the next thing. Right. Mm. Oh, my God. Well, first of all, that sounds ominous. I know, right? Right. Right. <laughs> because uh, that guy may be on his way to being the uh, the first uh, real supervillain. <laughs> <laughs> and you heard how quickly more of uh, backpedal on on pulling out his name. No, let me say something nice about him before you go to the next topic. <laughs> I didn't mean he's bad. No, 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 he's good. <laughs> Nothing wrong with Elon. Yeah, we all know that Jeff Bezos is really the bad one. <laughs> he's, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. he's the yeah. villain. Plus, yeah, he's bald exactly. like like um, Lex. You know Luthor. what? He he actually does make for the perfect Lex like, Luthor. Yeah, he's going to be the world's first trillionaire probably because he'll be the one that will land on an asteroid and mine it and for mine all it. of its mm -hmm. presence. Yeah, yeah.